that I'd be up in front of people talking about something like this. No way. important thing about to understand about this case is it has to be seen to be understood it has to be viewed it has to be felt it's extremely important to see in person dr. Reed to really get to know the man to know the intensity to know what he went through to know what he saw to understand his communication with the extraterrestrial Freddy this case is paramount in the development of our species. This is about contact of the highest form and it cannot be denied. This happened. It's absolutely true. It's completely real and it's been proven to be real the world over by, by people in Mexico, Japan, Europe, America, Canada, all over the world. This is the true story of Dr. Jonathan Reed, a North American who grew up in a family with loving parents who became a clinical research psychologist, a doctor for children. He had established a good career and a life of personal great reward. But on October 15, 1996, during a day hike in the mountains with his dog, his life was drastically changed forever. Truly, an incredible and phenomenal event. Jonathan Reed often took his dog Susie to the Cascade Mountains, about 60 miles east of Seattle, Washington. Never could he have imagined what was about to happen to him on this day. Jonathan's dog ran happily along the path through the brush and trees. Then the dog ran ahead, taking a side path, and disappeared from sight. Jonathan could hear her but not see her. Soon she started barking and Jonathan yelled to her, concerning that her barking was now beginning to sound desperate. Jonathan ran toward her sound, thinking that she might have encountered a bear or a wild animal. He picked up a fallen tree branch for protection as he ran towards the sound. He quickly arrived at the crest of the hill, where now the sight that met his eyes left him almost petrified. His dog, now fighting for her life with a strange creature that somewhat resembled a small child, but with very different proportions. All at once, the creature began literally tearing the dog's body apart, and finally disintegrated her remains. Happening within seconds, Jonathan rushed forward with a tree branch and hit the creature hard in the head. At that moment, Jonathan became mortally and violently ill, himself falling to the ground. It seemed that the creature who was now lying on the ground and apparently dead had somehow the capacity to make Jonathan instantly sick, maybe as some form of defense. At that moment I fell to the ground, sick, very violently sick, throwing up, uh, diarrhea, no muscle control, I could not stand, my breathing was congested, extremely congested. The whole area at that moment felt different, somehow foreign, as if time had maybe been distorted in this area. I needed to find some kind of reality in this moment, but I could find none. Again, I tried to regain my strength, and I sat in this area for many, many hours in reality, but in truth it felt very short in time. I tried to regain my strength and I would crawl and again fall down. After being sick and lying on the ground for what seemed to be a very long time, 
Jonathan noticed an unusual harmonic sound, which seemed to be coming from somewhere in the area. He decided to try to determine what this sound was and from where it originated from. During my encounter in the woods, at one point I heard this sound coming from somewhere that I could not see. So I looked around and tried to locate the direction that the sound was coming from. I hoped that this was maybe another hiker or a camper in the area and if so I needed their help but it turned out not to be. I looked and searched for this sound, this harmonic ebbing sound that seemed to drift in and out of the trees but as I reached the point of this sound I kind of broke through some bushes and some trees and found this black floating shape which I call the obelisk. It was large, much larger than my body. It was black, uh, completely black. Its surface was shiny and almost had a depth to it. But it looked like stone or marble, some type of stone. It had no windows, no doors, and no seams. It had six sides, six definite sides. But it was floating in the air. It was not touching the ground. It was as if it was anchored to this spot in the air. And as I ran up to it, I fell against it. And for a moment, I felt like it almost absorbed me into, into its space. And I felt like I was in this very large black room. And then one instant later, I was back outside and feeling this cold surface against my hand, which almost burned my hand like dry ice. It was a terrifying moment, but truly something that was so surreal that I couldn't even get my mind to believe what I was looking at, but nevertheless it was there. It was in front of me and I could not deny this.